All right, Chris, you made it to Helen, Georgia. Yes. What do you think? Beautiful area. Beautiful area. <laughs> it's a neat little town, right? Totally. So you guys came from Ontario, yeah. north of Buffalo. St. Catharines, Ontario. So tell me, you know, I've fallen in love with nature cast cabinets without knowing much about them other than I like how they look, I like how they function. You own the company. Did you start the company? What, what's the, what's the two-minute story of nature yeah, cast? Where do you come from? Sure. I'm one of three owners. Uh, nature cast had its birth in the panhandle of Florida, actually. Okay. And uh, we used to be Elmwood Kitchens, and one of our dealers was uh, tired of doing outdoor kitchens with teak and cypress and always having to service them. And, and yeah, the, uh, the metal market wasn't really for the people of Florida, so he had a friend that was in the resin business, and they made a, a copy of one of the, the cypress doors, a louver door. Mm. Made a mold from that and then kind of expanded the line, caught the attention of the Elmwood team, and mm -hmm. uh, they uh, uh, bought the company or partnered into it and then brought it back up to Canada. Isn't Elmwood is like a really high-end kitchen, yes. like built in a factory and then custom installed Correct. on site? Yeah. Because yeah, I think Mike, Mike, our, my rep here, Logo, was telling me about, he's like, you need to check those out for your next kitchen. Yeah. So you have roots in high-end home yeah. in kitchen cabinetry. And right? then back in 2015, that part of the business was sold, and now all we do is outdoor kitchens. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So Elmwood still exists. It does. But under a different brand. We a different share company. the same parking lot. So. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. So these are, are these manufactured completely in Ontario? I mean, where, where are you guys building them? Well, parts of the, the resin part comes out of a North Carolina facility uh, okay. that are experts in doing... Um, yeah, doing resin. Uh, we have a contract with them. We, we own the molds, we own the templates, but uh, they do all that work for us. They ship up it flat packed to us and then we assemble everything in St. Catharines. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And then the, so for those of you who are just seeing this for the first time, so the faces of the cabinets are, uh, are poured into a mold to emulate Correct. A, you know, cypress or teak to have, the, to have the wood grain, and the boxes are a PVC material in yes. white or black. Right. We have I have a couple of examples of white we can show some people, but you could choose white. I think the black looks cleaner, so I always choose that option. Yeah. Well, you're outdoors and you're dealing with charcoal yeah. barbecue grease, right? So yeah. black is probably 80% of our jobs, but you're right, we do have it in white as gotcha. well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna share you with you the whole process. I'm a little bit of ahead of the camera because we did some of the cleats and stuff like that. Uh, we were trying to anticipate for you guys to come down. Harry's here to kind of help us uh, think about proper installation. I think we got about 95% of the way there when Mike and I did it, doing it the first time. Yeah, Harry's gonna help make sure we get it to 100%, right. just start sharing best practices and things like that. So we got it pretty well ready to go, but let's, um, let's rewind back and dig into all the prep work that Mike and Mike and I did to kind of get this ready to go. kitchen. All right, let me read this off to you. So I made a list okay. and you can kind of fill in here. So step one, take delivery. All right. right. So we take delivery, but I, we always recommend, our design team always recommends that um, you inspect for problems, you know, shippers sometimes throw a fork through it. It happens when you're shipping heavy right. stuff, right. you know, across the country. Um, take photos. And then generally, do you guys recommend, do you um, take the product and then contact or do you r refuse it? I mean, what have you guys seen as best practice for shipping? Well, I mean, obviously best practice is always when you receive a, our pack, that you unpackage it yep, and yep. make sure that it's, it's what it should be. So we inventoried it and make sure we had all the parts and pieces we need. And, and then you would let our 
offices know whether or not you gotcha. had any issues. Gotcha, okay. So that we can... I, so our customers would contact us, possible, they'd yeah. contact us, and then we'd work with you guys yeah, and figure correct. it out. And so then I said inventory. Um, I recommended laying everything out. Make sure you, because even in, you know, even in design, sometimes some things can be a little off, your wall is a little off or something like that. So what we did is I unboxed everything, unpacked everything, inspected everything, and then just kind of rough laid it out. Make right. sure I had, I, I had the proper right. amount of pilasters, appropriate amount of trim pieces, all of that stuff. So right. that was you my next You always want to go through your inventory list and make sure you actually got everything that yep. you had ordered. Uh, let's see. The other thing I made, uh, or I want to make very clear in this, these are black PVC boxes. If you're in the southeast, the southwest, anywhere where it's really hot in the summer, you don't want to let your cabinets sit there melting in the sun because that black, That's uh, right. you can get delamination and glue and have issues like that, right? So you Not don't so want to... Not so much delamination as PVC is pliable. So it gets too much heat, it can start to warp on you. Mm, gotcha, okay. Simply, especially on, on, on the bigger pieces that have space to, for it to move, right? We're gonna talk about this in installation, about covering the thing after it's in right. place, if you're, if you're waiting on your countertops. But even when it's, after you've unboxed it, you know, a lot of people may have it sitting out there for a week and baking in the sun. You wanna make sure you get, grab some blankets, That's moving right. blankets or something covered. We always right. recommend that it gets covered. It's not so much for weather other than direct yeah. sunlight. Because people can get confused. I mean, you could throw this in the bottom of the pool and 100 years later, take it back out and it'll Correct. be fine. But the heat of the sun, I mean, these are designed to... Or the UV. The UV is good here, but the interior of the boxes are, are, right. are not the same as the resin on the, on the correct. exterior. Gotcha. So then, um, let's see. Um, start by prepping your area. So remove outlet covers, check your gas lines, figure out what you're going to do, water, electrical. A lot of those things you would have done by right. a plumber or electrician. Have that in place. That's yes. right. So we have our gas line is here, so we have easy access to the gas line. We're actually going to hit stubs out right here. We're going to come straight up. And we already had electrical for both our hood and our and our setup here. So we're going to we're going to basically cut a hole in the back of the box. We only need power for the rotisserie of the, of the of the alfresco grill, the rotisserie and the lights from it. So really simple there, but you may have to run electrical. Um, I always said, interested in your thoughts, if, and this is Mike's take, if if possible, mount your hood first. Yes. That way you're not like climbing over top of your cabinets, right? Yeah, whenever you have to reach over something, it makes it more awkward and yep. difficult. Yep. So. It's not 100% necessary, but but recommended. Right. Uh, then uh, we're going to start on, on the highest side. Now our deck is pretty level, but if you had a slope, you know, which a lot of outdoor exterior areas may, you're going to start with a cabinet that's at the highest point. That way you turn those feet all the way in and then you work your way to the low point, right? Because then your feet are going to be out. You may have to shim the lower section all the way right. down. You do have quite a bit of adjustability. How much range do we have, do you recall? Um, it's about two inches. Okay. So in most, unless you have a really sloped area, which may not be a good candidate for an outdoor kitchen, you should have enough adjustment between flat right. on one side and then maybe all the way out at the bottom if you had to have a slope. So when you're discussing that, the one thing you always want to make sure, what, what I always recommend is, is I use a laser level just to kind of get those those gotcha. areas our pilasters come in at a 36 inch height okay. so you always want to make sure that you don't end up where you're now mm. all of a sudden at 36 and a half but now your pilaster is too short because right? these so are 30 they, they're 34 and a half okay right so we, we we give you an inch and a half extra on the pilaster gotcha. you're going to cut them fit them depending on that's a the good slope is that's a good tip gotcha. we always well, you always want to look at what, where that is so that you know where that point is, so you work towards that. Mm. Now, screws, there's a very specific type of screw we need. This, most of what we're going to do is a number eight. These are from uh, Simpson Strong Tie. Um, these we bought from McMaster Car. But these are a, a, um, a composite like decking screw. Perfect. T316 stainless. You want 316 so you don't end up with rusted screws in your, in your right. cabinet array, right? That's correct. And these aren't cheap, but these cabinets aren't cheap, so right. spend the money, get the right screw. Um, eventually, we're going to have these in the store for people to buy, um, but uh, we've, we can, we'll have links on you know what you need to get exactly. Um, McMaster carries them. Generally, cabinets will use square drive. What's th what's the reason for that? Why do, Mike, why don't we use square drive in cabinets? It's just, it's just and they're, it's either square or torx nowadays. It used to be torx, yeah. but yeah. just for positive engagement. Yeah. Gotcha. 
less strip yeah. stripability, yeah. I guess. The torque actually works the best, but yeah. the, yeah. the square is very popular yeah. and, and yeah, easy I, to I get. Yeah. So we have inch and a quarter, two and a half, and three and a half. 90% of which we're going to use the inch and a quarter. Where we get into pilasters is where we may need a longer screw right, to engage you want to make that. Sure that you hit the core yep, of the yep. pilaster. We're always going to, what do you call it, when we screw through the inside so that we're not screwing through and having to fill our panels, right? So, like our, our back panels and stuff like that, we're going to through screw the cabinet rather than going through oh, the exterior. Yes. Interior coming, screwing. Right, you're yeah. coming in from behind to make sure that we don't yeah, have to yeah. later on come and do touch up on our actual finished resin. So, then our process was before we even got the cabinets we stopped at Home Depot or stop at your local granite supplier um, get your appointment scheduled so we have our appointment scheduled for tomorrow because we thought we would have the cabinet array done and set up in place at least resident ready for measurement uh, and our cabinet company or our countertop company is going to come and measure tomorrow and then we have to then the waiting game on waiting right. for, for for the setup of, of the countertop so order your countertop the countertop on this setup will sh I'll share with you pricing at the end but I think I think it was like 3400 bucks, something like that was what, what the countertop of the initial quote was for it. Then, um, let's see, after you do the countertop ordering or measuring, then run your lines, your drains, your gas, all that stuff. So we'll, you'll drill right. pilot holes through That's or right. hole saw holes through as needed. Um, then after that, you would put uh, any uppers, if you had upper cabinets or anything like that, which we don't. Uh, and then uh, then we would do our back panels, toe kicks, all the trim work. Right. Right. So after the cabinets in place, you would cut trim work. Uh, we're going to show you all the tools that you need as well, but a uh, table saw, miter saw is a good good thing to have. You can Absolutely. rent those. Absolutely. Those are easily rentable. Let's see. Um, we cut the whole countertop install would be in the next week or so. Install the grill, um, connect your electrical gas lines, install your drawer pulls, and then consider doing some like Hafla drawer inserts. So that seems pretty simple, right? It's not. It's mostly simple. Yeah. If you stick to the game plan. It's, it's leveling, leveling is the skill, right? Leveling and shimming. Right. Which, if you watch us do this, then it's it's very doable. Right. If you take your time, make sure you're level plumb. Yep. You're good to go. Then adjustments later on are very simple. Yeah. It's when you start you, rack and boxes and rack and boxes, then your then your drawers don't open right. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People so, rush sometimes and that's where they, they lose it, right? It's a matter of right. making sure that you stay true to your 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 lines and your level and plumbness. Because they'll come square, but if your floor is not square and you don't level and plumb properly, then your doors won't stay open right and right. you may your drawers may bind or hit each other right. and so you, you want to avoid that. When it's when it's it's not setting perfect level, you will rack that. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. So we're going to show you all that stuff. So let's get started. So help me understand the difference between custom, meaning the guys come to your house and they build it like in their shop versus like factory precise. Like, you know, they always talk about custom cabinets. I've right. had this, like the local guy so, comes out and then they're always not it, like as nice as these that are built in the factory, you know what I'm saying? Right, so custom is anything that's built per job. So you put an order in and we start from scratch, cut all the parts and put your job together. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about a, a just factory, you're taking them off shelves, pre-built cabinets. Right, right, so the Home will, Depot, that's, big box store. Right. Yep, yep. That's right. So here it's, it's, you're, you're measuring it and then putting the order in and then we build it per order. So it's, it's custom made for every customer. But even though there's a catalog versions. Right, so you're ordering from a catalog and then we're building it based on that right for the, for the customer as opposed to just grabbing got it off the shelf. I mean then we have how many colors? I think there's like 20 different colors you know we've got different finishes we've right. got yeah we got so this is the shoot this is the cypress this is no this is a rustique uh, a new door line that we started about a year just over a year ago and this is the color is Arctic Slate. Got it. Which is a shade of dark, dark gray, I guess, technically, right? For well, black. Grain. Yeah. But it's a teak grain. That's correct. So this grain is emulating what teak would look like. Right. So what we did is uh, actually made every size in teak mm -hmm. and then sent them down to our North Carolina um, associate and they've made molds from everything that we sent down so they're 
each one of these pieces is made from an actually teak door. Oh, okay, gotcha. So what he's doing here is creating the ability to not drop a darn shim down too far. I'm keep them put. I already yeah. know what plum is with this, so that makes it easier. One less thing. So this is what I like using. It's a surge, so it's real right. easy. You don't want to overdrive screws into these. Right. And this is real finite. You can you can bring a screw in nice and slow and not over screw it and strip it out. So this is this is my favorite tool. Torque. Just right, so this is a hydraulic actuated, a hydraulic driven, gear driven system. Yep. I'd say they're on the level. And I uh, guarantee you we have subscribers that will uh, freeze frame that and double check to make sure we, uh, we got it right. We are, the floor is out of level, see that? So that's just sitting there, you can tell the front of the box is, the floor is slightly out. So when we pile ashes, a lot of people, what we will we will suggest is you would bring, bring it, it out front. Yeah. yeah. And we we normally do it roughly with with where this the face of the the face of the door is. Yeah. So would you say that the level of sophistication, like if you were making this piece out of wood versus out of this, is it this is a much more sophisticated process to like all the work that goes into the, you know pouring the resin, getting it out of the mold, then treating it. There's a lot more than just right. cutting and sanding a piece of wood, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, you're dealing with a product that's that's simulated to look like wood. It's not real wood, but it's simulated to look like wood. So there are some diff different things in the handling it and how you manage that. And that's part of the reason why the cost, because of the amount right. of labor and, and work that goes into manufacturing. Yeah, if you can just imagine what the cost of just making every door once in actual wood, sending it down, getting an actual mold of each piece, and then now you what they actually do is then make another mold of that only so that uh, as as anything wood will eventually break down mm -hmm. so they make a mold and it's almost like a stone product so that they the each mold lasts about 100 pours because mm -hmm. of the heat in, gotcha. in when you mix resins together so every 100 pours or so they've got to re rework that mold oh wow to yeah. bring so that you you keep that crispness looking in the wood mm -hmm. and so what they've done there used to be that you just continue to redo it from the, a wood door, but a, a wood, it eventually will, with, with heat, moisture, will start to move a little bit more. This stone uh, mold that they make now will actually withstand that, and so they can last a whole lot longer before we've got to actually rework that original wood mold and repair that. So it's uh, it is a, it's a process, you know. There's a lot of work that goes into yeah. making these uh, doors look the way they do. Someday we're gonna get Mike his own set of tools. That way he doesn't have to mess with mine. Mm -hmm. Mike can stay clean, mm -hmm. fresh. That's it, unused looking. Yep. <laughs> What's the factory it's got a look like? Feel to it. It's it's very clean. Mm. Very oh, yeah? clean. Yeah. 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 The... yeah. We've got some great dust collection system. Mm. In, the, in the factory, because it is, it is a very fine dust. Let's see, let's see. Be simple to adjust. Some of the bigger cabinets can get a little dicey because you have feet all the way in the back. Yeah, you can. I'm not sure whether there's a tool out there that, you, that would reach back, but they do have those slots that you can use to turn that. Yeah. Yeah, I just have to slide the cabinet out, adjust it, slide it back. Yeah, often, often what I'll do is I'll. Before putting it in place, I'll kind of use measure it, measure it, and kind of yeah. try and get it to yeah, get it close, as exact as you yeah. can. And sometimes yeah. you get lucky. And it's of course, this back corner is the high corner, so. Yeah. I mean, I think this is by far the easiest project we've done in this house. Everything else has been so much more effort. And so, who else does this kind of stuff? Like, what, what are, you guys are like a, a first, aren't you, in, in this in this world? Nobody doing what we're doing with resin molds and uh, mimicking the look of real wood. So there's other uh, PVC cabinets out there, mm -hmm. but their fronts are a lot different. Yeah. So that's that's NatureCast uh, with 
the ownership being having a background in the indoor kitchen business, all they did was take that indoor business and mimic it to the outdoor. Mm -hmm. Make it make it with parts that can withstand the weather. Yeah. Right. I have a perfect example. My house is ten years old. Someone used quote unquote outdoor cabinets. They're a particle board basically with the veneer over top. It's they're all just, separate. They're destroyed. They're yeah. all falling apart. Right. Yeah. They're falling apart. And they you know they have the, the laminate is weatherproof. Yeah. Right. But sure. they only last so long and they fall That's apart. Right. Yeah. I mean, any, anybody knows anything outside weather is brutal. Yeah. And it's not even out in the rain. It's under a lanai. It's still okay. just moisture and right. you know rain, wind, that kind of stuff gets them wet and they're falling apart. Yeah, the humidity in Florida. Yeah, like we wouldn't have as big of an issue here with that. Sea air. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Want to keep it too close to chlorine. Yeah. Our pools. Um, yeah, my pool is twenty feet away. You, it's. Yeah. It will affect. Yeah. I'm so going to do this in my yard. I need to. They're, they're, and so these are all design engineer of the UV top coat and all that That's to help correct. avoid and, and resist that. The outdoor, it's it's actually like the, the top coat of a car finish that we actually use. We clear coat it with it's okay. basically what you would use on a car. A urethane, so like, yeah. yeah. UV protected, you know, clear coating that goes over top of everything. So Harry, do we cut these a little bit short or you try to get it exact? Do the pilasters really matter in this case? I mean, Well, in, in, in this matter, you, you want to cut it Flush. 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 Yeah, right. yeah, you don't want to see. Yeah, I mean, not that you would see it underneath the counter, but right. yeah, we'll make them thirty-four. Yeah. So, Mike, are, work, right? yeah. are you going to scribe it, or are you saying that we're level? We don't need to scribe it. Well, I'm going to because we don't know what this is down here. We set it here, scribe against the back side of the, or the side of the cabinet, and cut that line, and, and then make sure we're right. Because if we just cut a square cut and the, and the floor slope, we know we have this level. Right, the floor could be sloped a little bit. So this is where we're going to need the larger, longer screws. Yeah. So I just need well, the small clamp. It's nice yeah. to just yeah. peel off and put a good clamp on. Yeah, you have one out there. So it's actually nice that you're using what you are. A lot of people will use an impact over and over screw and also because it'll sink right into the PVC. Yep, right? yep. Yeah, your screw goes in deeper than you want it to go. I went from never having an outdoor kitchen in my life to having two, technically three. I've got that little baby one downstairs. Is that far enough? Yeah, you can push. There we go. Fine, get a screw. So what do you think, Harry? What's the, on this porch, life expectancy of these cabinets? 50 years, forever? <laughs> well, I would, as long as they're being looked after. I mean, again, they're, they're, they can stand out here, but it's like anything else. It's like a, a great brand new car mm -hmm. that if you spend a lot of money for, you want to take, you want also want to make sure you maintain it and take care of it, but it will last for your lifetime. What do we clean them with? Um, we just recommend like a, a mild soap and water. Yeah. Dawn, maybe, or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, we never pushed anything up against the wall to no, realize that. Yeah, we sure didn't. We just kind of eyeballed it. Gosh, I, this is my favorite part. The pilester part just yeah. makes everything look so much chunkier. It's, it's little yeah. detail things. That yeah. Just kinda yeah. Really set it apart. That's my favorite part. All right, so Mike's rolling through. We're on. Uh, Fourth cabinet, we're gonna do the corner cabinet. Three left. And then we can start working on the trim. We're gonna be, gonna be done before sunset. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. Maybe I should get back to being the camera guy. That we don't have to do anything. This is great. So we were talking about earlier that drawer glides, nobody in the world makes a stainless steel undermount drawer glide. Salise, Bloom, Green, what's the other one? Green leaf or green field? Grass. grass field or grass leaf? It's, it's just grass. Oh, it's grass, yeah. The one with the green tabs. Yeah, it's grass. The grass, no one makes a stainless undermount, which if you put a regular, you know, steel, hinge in there, you're going to end up with some real problems. It sticks out so far, we have room to do something. I mean, that's a good 
go against the... So what we're talking about here is this pilaster. Because we built the stringer off the wall, the cleat off the wall, we're going to have to cut a piece of uh, a base molding to fill in that gap, which is which should look great. And we can cut it to the angles by scribing it. Cut it with a jigsaw. Yeah, I kind of like this camera guy roll, Mike. Yeah. I like it better than this. I think, yeah. It saved me a lot of money. That's it. You clamp that. This is awesome. So we talked about this earlier, but when you cut these, especially if you need to add a shim, you got to cut it with a hand saw, not a circular saw, not a table saw, because we're not going to be making them perfectly straight. The cut will be straight, but it'll be at an angle. All right, so you're going to scribe this as well, same as the others, cut. And then we'll put a piece of base that covers up the gap. Just like, Which is right here. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, that's true. We do, We already ordered that. Covers that seam. So the, the the thing that you have to make sure of before you put the glue is that you just scuff that PVC. So it's just sticks. so that the glue pe yeah. uh, bites yeah. into yeah. that yeah, better. Yeah, sanding that right there. Yeah. Right there, the so that's sander. easy. <laughs> All right. One step we missed was to scuff the back panel that we didn't do at my last outdoor kitchen. So we're gonna scuff this and glue it. Right, so this is um, outdoor rated. Indoor, outdoor. Yeah. Panel Who was I got? I got in trouble with Terry because I use because I use indoor, not well, we outdoor. Use panel adhesive, but you're on uh, the cover, so it's not like it's ever getting wet. Yeah, yeah. Terry was chastising. Yeah, giving me giving me some real. He's, uh, he's Terry's real particular yeah, about using the right stuff. Yeah. He's busting my chops. He's like, well, you did it almost right. That's right. You want to keep quite. That's it. Keep as close to your, your giving it no no strength ability to to curl up on you. No, you get close, it's gonna squeeze, isn't it? I just don't want it to squeeze outside of that, but how close do you guys usually about, go? about an inch in a bit. <clears throat> That's good. Caught me on that. Mm. <laughs> so again, as you're screwing this on, you always want to make sure that your panel is nice tight up against the substrate, and then you take the time to make sure you get Glue has an opportunity to bond and dry before. And then the whole way. That's right. What we're screwing to is not, Resin, not the right. same as the right. PVC, so you gotta go real easy on the right. screws. Go ahead and just snug it. You just want to snug it right up. So the trim piece will go here. Yep. And then we'll scribe, do a scribe molding over there. That's right. Not a toe kick. And when and you we'll do this over here, I would suggest you just put some <clears throat> like piece. Yeah, we'll put a backer here, in there. Like yeah. a backer piece? Yeah. That way you've got something to bite. Something to, to bite, to hold yeah. on to it, and <clears throat> yeah, then it'll stay. So we got a trim piece glued, and we got some two inch screws to go through. So you can grab it. So, on there. Because now that you have this, we should actually make some nice marks on there so that 
just put it on there once and yeah, so what we can do is we measure mess we can it. measure off of there. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right, so we're back out this morning, putting on the drawer face. I guess because we'd rushed the order, there was one one drawer face that um, they had to rush ship to us. So we got that. We're gonna work on the toe kicks this morning, and you know, final wrap up. We'll also put the countertop holder brackets, the L brackets on, and we need to get the grill. I guess we need to set the grill start insert in. Something like that. No, we can't set it in until the countertop's in. So we just have to have it assembled so that they can measure it to know what size they're cutting. Yeah. Because they'll make that cut when they're here. But these, they give this these pieces, these little L brackets to as risers to lift up your grill insert, which we might be able to use this time a little easier. All right, I built the grill insert, which we'll need the countertop person will need, I guess, when the countertops come. But this uh, alfresco thing is pretty stout. You need a absolutely need a grill insert if you're going to do these cabinets because they're composite. So you need to insulate it from the uh, from the heat. All right, I got to open up the Evo, get this put in position as our countertop guy. The measure will be here in an hour or so. get this out and in position. Yeah, so, so what we're talking about here is that theoretically you want that the top piece to fit flush. Yeah. But if you do that, then the doors don't open. Yeah. Yep. We'll show it to you when we put this thing together. Yeah, so what it is is I think if we bring the cabinet to here, then maybe it'll just just cover the mm. no it won't it yeah it has open. to go back it has to go to here right so you're going to see the hinge hardware and stuff and then that'll be this will be sticking out like that but you i think that line yeah. up, it comes to here i think that's better than than having them having this hard to open for yeah you. yeah because yours opens about like that Mm -hmm. uh, I can barely get it just out. Just sneak this out by wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. And I have to push against the, the, yeah, right. the piece, you know, and eventually what I decided to do is I'm just not cleaning it every time. Because if I do it every single time, eventually my front piece of my cabinet's going to break. Yeah. To me, from here on out, the Evo is the cornerstone of the whole outdoor kitchen experience. So you want to cut yeah, that much. Right. So when it sits, that lip, yeah, yeah. Right. that lip will be like up here. Yeah. Right. Right. I think the instructions also tell us what's confirmed. Oh, read instructions. Twenty-seven five eight. No, no. Just look at the pictures and the instructions. Don't yeah, read it. Go. Don't read it. Come on. Twenty-seven and five eighths by six. You're freaking losers. <laughs> it's in that box. So we're gonna take off this front piece. Imagine if you did like five of these, you would be rolling through them in like half a day. Yeah. And once you get to the fourth or fifth one. Yeah, the guys that to do this all, that's all they do. Yeah. It's just like guys that like carpet. They make it look so easy, so fast, they can knock out a house in a day. Yeah. Well, you're gonna screw it in, aren't you? Yeah, but I, I have to figure out how far we're sticking this out because of this. And so, make a. Want to have this this edge here an inch from here? We can test it on this piece here. You need to come out more. Right, right there. That's where it needs to be. Right there. 
Yeah, this needs to come up a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's level this way. Actually, the back end needs to come up. So yeah. I'll put the screws at the front. You tell me when level is. Right. And then I'll put the screws at the top of the hole in the back. Yeah. All right. You ready to level it now? Mm -hmm. Right there. I'm, gonna, I'm putting a shim in, so I'm okay. screwing you up a little bit. Okay, now you can put it where it goes. Right there. All right, so let's explain what we did the Evo here, how we, now we've got a system here, it's yep. not too bad. So we have a, a, a drawer, a fake drawer front that goes here, right? It's an inch thick, so what we did was cut some one inch blocks. We used this uh, as, a, as a dummy to gauge how far out we need to bring the Evo because we need these doors to open all the way, which they do right there at one inch protrusion. And then we set, cut this notch to uh, six and five eighths by full width here. So it's so a little bit bigger than it needs little, to be. Just a slight, we made an over, an eighth over. Right, and then and it was 27 and three quarters wide. Right, right, 27 and three quarters. And then we, our countertops are gonna be inch and a quarter. Yours may diff, be different if they're, you know, if it's in quartz, it might be in seven eighths or something, or maybe it's poured counter. But what we have now is we have our Evo just about a sixteenth low on purpose, so that when we when we when he puts the countertops in, we've got slotted screws or slotted holes uh, on the on the mounting flange of the Evo. So what we can do is get the counter in, and then we can fine tune it upward so it's just flush with the top of the counter, and then we'll set our pan on, and it should be perfect. It's important that the Evo's level because yeah. then you know, your grease. Stuff will run off. Right, right. Yeah, so we leveled it as well. But this box is pretty darn, if you get the box level front to back, you know, you could, you can get it pretty close. We, we cut our little block and our, or a stick to, or kickstand up here, Matt called yeah. it, to keep it kind of in place while I curled under. Matt held the front and then I screwed it off. So this should be 36 and our height is three and three quarters. So cut one three and three quarter, rip it three and three quarter, and then cut it at three foot. And I'm using this PL375, which is a Loctite interior exterior um, construction adhesive. So this should fit right in. Yep. And if you see the the backing that you attach to doesn't come all the way to the floor, so you don't have to put adhesive on the whole toe kick. Just about the top two and a half inches. to it. You want to finish nail it? Nope. No reason to. And you'd see nail heads and that, that adhesive put a lot of adhesive. And they're pretty flat. They're not like, you know, the panels were kind of bowed a bit. These were pretty flat, so. Two inches past this because there's a one inch, you know, big panel that goes right. ahead of this right there. So it'd be an inch past this drawer face. And then that gets uh, cantilevered over for a bar. Okay, how much? How much can you go? 12 inches. 12 inches, that's what we bought. We bought, we've got eight, uh, six corbels to go there to support that, so 12 inches it is. Okay, so let's talk about how we do the drawer pulls. Right. So this is a longer, uh, I think these are 17 inch long drawer pulls. 13. Uh, 13. So they're outside of the normal width of the true position tool. 
So you gotta you gotta buy the true position tool, and I would recommend everybody do this. Do the true position tool, which is this thing, and get yourself uh, the extension pieces as well. So buy the whole kit. Yeah, then you can definitely do that. Yeah, this is pretty wide. So you're gonna find the center position of the drawer, right. left to right, There's and ours vertically. Is 18 inches. Yep, ours is 18. And then we have our drawer height. So the center of the drawer is two and five sixteenths. So we set this up here. Align the center of the drawer. We know where the fourth hole out, which just gives us our, uh, our 13 inch center to center. And I'm doing just spotting. So we're spotting on this one because you have this this, this rustique yeah. little yeah. little piece here they call it. That's all you really need is a spot. And through. And then these are drawer pull screws. Yeah, so they're trimmable. They're not great. Yeah, you got to get if. You, yeah, actually, you have to trim right at that relief. If you yeah. catch a thread at all, they don't want us to go in. Yeah, so then I just cut them with a pair of dikes and pliers, pliers with the cutter. Sharp blade in the center. Super slick.